Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Trying to discuss for math's theorem, go over a proof on it, and also go over a brief biography on Pierre Fermat, which is a theorem named after. Um, basically, he was born in 1601, died in uh, 1665. He was a French lawyer who took up mathematics as a hobby, and but despite his amateur status, he was actually one of the two inventors of analytical geometry. Descartes Hayes was another mathematician, and he was the other. So basically, his methods for finding tangents to curves and maximum and minimum values before the formal invention of limits and derivatives made him a forerunner of Newton in the creation of differential calculus. And in fact, Sir Isaac Newton actually wrote that his ideas about calculus came directly from Fermat's uh, v way of drawing tangents and tangent lines. So here is uh, Fermat's theorem I'm going to go over. Just note that I, the notation I'm using is going to be uh, actually derivative notation and some limit notation which was actually created after uh, Fermat, like after he, he died. But the thing is, um, his his uh, theorem is just, it's just much easier to write it in this notation. Anyway, so if f is a function has a local max or minimum at c, and if the derivative at c exists, then the derivative is equal to zero at c. In my earlier video, I showed what local max and min were. I showed that basically any local maximum is just gonna be like a curve like this up and down etc. So if you have something like this, this point is going to be at this point here is going to, if this is C, let's call this over here C1, C2. This is a local max. That's going to be this one here. And this one's going to be a local minimum right here. Yeah, now what this uh, theorem is saying is that basically at these points at this local maximum, and if you're given this, and you're also given that this uh, exists here, that the derivative exists, then as you can see the slope or the derivative yeah, is this going to be a flat line right here? So, or the derivative is zero. The slope is zero basically at this point, even at the bottom right here. As you can see, the slope is going to be zero. So you can see visually why it's true. Yeah, so the slope equals derivative at c. It basically equals to zero. So as you can see, it should be. But you can prove this analytically by yeah, by basically uh, utilizing the definition of local max or min. In this case, I'll show the proof for local max, and the local min is going to be the exact same thing except to just be flipping the signs around. Basically, if we have a local uh, max right here, so at this point C, so if we draw, let's say, somewhere near this C, a value of H right here, so we'll go by H to the right, and yeah, this A, just so H to the left right here. Yeah, and so basically, if we go this far, it's, it's somewhere near C, so anywhere, let's say, over here to here. As you can see, in this case, f of c is always going to be greater than or equal to f of c plus h. So if you're going to the right here, so f of c plus h. Yeah, so it's always greater than this f of c plus h if, if let's say, h is greater than 0. So when h is greater than 0, here we'll be looking at this point right here. If it's less than 0, we'll be looking at this point. But once again, this local max is going to be greater than whatever this h value is or equal to it. If h is 0, it's going to be both equal to it. So it gets closer and closer to this. Yeah, and also if this is just a flat line, you'll have a, a local max that's a range of values, and that's when basically even if h is greater than 0, you'll still have it equal to it. Basically, so when we can start off with this point right here from the definition. So we write f of c is greater than or equal to f of c plus h. And now if we rearrange this, remember this is the case of h is greater than 0. So we're dealing with this case right now. So we'll move this over, so we'll get f of c plus a. Just want to make a zero on one of the sides. So move this to the right. So then we're going to have minus f of c, and then this is going to be uh, less than equal to because we'll be on this right side zero. So we just shift this over. So this point is less than or equal to zero. So now if we divide by h, number h is positive, so uh, we're not going to change any signs. So we divide by h in this case. And uh, on both sides, this zero uh, just becomes zero. This just equals to zero on this this right side. So this one here, we will get basically, yeah. You know, what this this is, a, is exactly a derivative. So if we write this as a limit, as let's say h approaches zero, but remember it's positive. So from the right side, we'll get f of c plus h minus f of c all divided by h right here. So we take a limit as it gets smaller and smaller. This is going to be less than or equal to zero right here, which is this point over here. But we are given that the limit exists. 
I mean the derivative exists, not the limit. So basically if we're given that the derivative exists at C, which is in the theorem, then we'll have uh, this case limit as h approaches zero from any side of this derivative. This is basically the definition of derivative. It's the same as from the right side here. I'll show example uh, soon where this doesn't, where this isn't the case. So basically we'll have now derivative fc right here is gonna be equal to, so then this, this is the derivative right here. This is this one over here is a derivative at C by definition. And now this is going to be actually less than yet. So less than equal to, we, we showed basically since it exists, this has to be equal to this right side. And we've shown from here, it's less than equal to zero. So this derivative is, has to be less than equal to zero. So now when we look at when H is less than zero, so when, when H is less than zero, we'll be looking at this case over at this point right here. We're, we can write down this exact same thing. We'll, we'll end up with this over here, except the limit as h approaches zero from the left side. And since we're dividing by a negative a, by an, an h which is negative, this sign will get flipped around. So this will be greater than or equal to. So if we end up using this one similarly like that, I'm not going to go over it because it's just going to be inventing the wheel again. So we're just going to get now f prime of c by applying this uh, derivative exists principle which we were given is greater than or equal to zero. So all we do is flip the sign once we're changing this negative sign. I'm changing this h sign. So it's greater than zero. So we're given two conditions. We, we prove that it has to be, the derivative has to be less than or equal to zero and greater than or equal to zero. And the only way that this can match both of these theorems is if the derivative is equal to zero. So this is the only way that it's, it's true. And there's our proof. So there's a proof for it. Yeah, and also for the local minimum, uh, this is going to be basically uh, almost exact same uh, procedure we did right here, except now we're going to have this negative sign here. Instead of going greater than or equal to, it's going to be less than or equal to, and all we're going to be doing is flipping these over. When h is uh, basically less than zero, we'll have this derivative is, is less than or equal to zero, and this will be flipped to greater than four. h is greater than zero. And then basically it's going to be the exact same thing. I'm not going to show it, but it's going to be the exact same thing. It's going to prove above there. Yeah, here I just uh, typed this out. Basically, another note is that if there is a local max or minimum, the derivative need not exist right here, and it does not have to be. Yeah, it need not exist, and basically, so if you or if you're given a local max or minimum, if it doesn't exist, then you you don't need to have uh, f c right here equal to zero right here. So you're not gonna necessarily have this condition. In fact, because it doesn't exist, and then one example is if you have this one, y equals absolute value of x. As you can see right here, there is a local uh, minimum right here, or, or even an absolute minimum. But as you see, the derivative from the left side is going to be like this. It's going to go, uh, it's going to be negative uh, downwards over here. It's going down, and then from the right side here, as you can see, it's going to be going upwards like this. So, so basically, the derivatives don't match from the right side and the left side of zero. Another note is that if the derivative is zero, it does not always mean that there is a local max or a minimum. And then one example is this uh, y equals x cubed. As you can see here, this is going up like this, and then the derivative becomes zero over here, but then it goes back up right there. So there is no local uh, maximum or there's no local minimum, like because you would need this parabola-like shape here. So you cannot have it there. You would need a curve in order for a local maximum to uh, to basically occur. So anyways, that's all for today. If you learned from this video, you can download these notes in the link uh, below and also watch related videos to this. Uh, anyways, that's all for today. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for another math easy solution.